HODL than Bitcoin. What's up, everyone? Ben with the BTC Sessions today, and we are going to be looking at an application called Abra. Now, what is Abra? This is an app that allows you from more or less anywhere in the world to take your Bitcoin and utilize it to gain exposure to other financial assets like stocks, ETFs, local fiat currencies, or other cryptocurrencies. Now, obviously, I'm not a, a big fan of most other cryptocurrencies, but I do see value in allowing people to utilize Bitcoin to gain access to international financial markets. I think there's a definite benefit to that. And I, if, if you're familiar, if you've been watching the show for a while, you may recall that I did a video on Abra a couple of years back. And I think at the time when I shot that video, I didn't quite understand what they were going for with this app and what the grand vision was. Because at the time, it was, again, a couple local fiat currencies, as well as a few different cryptocurrencies. And you were able to get access to the price fluctuations of like Litecoin using Bitcoin. But I, I just, I guess I didn't see the value there. But now that I see where they've come to this point, I definitely see what the grander vision is. And um, I think what they're doing is something really, really interesting. Um, it's typically very difficult for people internationally to gain access to US markets and stocks and ETFs and things like that. It can be quite difficult. But now, anybody with a phone, and some Bitcoin can do it. It also allows you to buy fractions of stock. And, and we should be clear here, you're not actually owning the stock, but you're getting exposure to the price fluctuations of said stock. So not only can you own portions of a stock own, but you can also be uh, earning the dividends that are paid out on that stock if you do receive dividends on it. Um, so very, very interesting stuff that's going on here. Um, I highly encourage you guys to check it out and let me know what you think. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. There's still plenty of work to be done, I think. Uh, but the change from my video a couple of years ago to now, I definitely see the trajectory and I do like what I see here. So uh, we're going to dive into it in a moment. Now, before we get started with everything, of course, I encourage you guys to check out my website. Uh, you can reach out to me personally there if you want to book me for a private session, need some hand-holding uh, for whatever you need. Um, but beyond that, I've got a couple of sponsors. You can check out Ledin. This is where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to get a Canadian or US dollar loan. And you can also uh, utilize their Bitcoin savings account and earn interest on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin. There's a link for that down below. And if you get a loan, they'll give you an extra $50 for the Bitcoin. And outside of that, of course, I use NordVPN to help mask my IP address, uh, basically to encrypt my browsing data and, uh, you know, observe a little bit of privacy while I'm utilizing things like Bitcoin. So uh, they've got a deal right now where you can get it for three bucks a month. I encourage you to check them out. With that, let's dive into Abra. Okay, so here we are on the home screen of the Abra app. Now, this has already been set up it is very much similar to setting up a regular Bitcoin wallet in that you do have custody of your funds in certain scenarios in this. So you do get a recovery phrase when it comes to your Bitcoin and a couple of other digital assets. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is not focusing on the setup. The other things that are different about this app uh, are that you need to have an email address, a name, and a mobile phone number allocated to this account. And that comes in relation to if you happen to own stocks or whatever, they want to tie that back to you in some way, shape or form so that you don't essentially lose your funds because uh, while the crypto may be yours, uh, the stocks you know, are, are allocated to them and they are custodying that for you, of course. Um, so let's just take a look at what's on our screen here first. So uh, we have a Canadian dollar balance of all assets in the wallet up top. Um, you now also have any of the assets that you've designated that you'd like to track down below this. So you can see right now, you can see Bitcoin, shares of Amazon and Canadian dollars. Those are the ones that I've just selected prior to this. 
Now, along the bottom panel here, you have your portfolio, which we're on now. You have alerts. So if you want to add an alert, you can go ahead and do that and you can choose whatever asset of all of the ones. And we'll look into these in a moment uh, that you'd like to track. And then you can choose below or above a certain price point. Um, Outside of that, you have add money. So you can do this via a crypto wallet. So adding Bitcoin, Litecoin, a few others. You can do this via Visa or MasterCard, which comes at a 4% fee. So quite steep. Um, and there's limits uh, per day depending uh, on what you're doing. And you can also do a bank transfer. Keep in mind that the bank transfers are only available in either the United States or in uh, the Philippines. And so it's interesting, depending on where you're located, certain aspects of this will not be available to you. Banking, only Philippines and the US. However, the Philippines and the US do not have access to the stocks that are in this, only the, the crypto and the local currencies. Um, whereas on the flip side, if you're outside of the US, then you have access to the crypto, the stocks, the local currencies, but not the banking. So it just depends. You have a screen where you can exchange uh, your assets. Um, and we'll dive into this deeply in a moment because we will do an exchange. And you have an, a withdraw screen where you can withdraw to a privately held Bitcoin wallet uh, outside of Abra, or you can transfer to your bank if you're either in the US or the Philippines. Now, if we go back to the main screen here, again, uh, in the top right corner, you can uh, see manage assets. And if you go here, this is where you get a list of all of the possible assets at the time of recording this video that you can add in. So you can see these are all the individual stocks. So perhaps I would like to add something like, I don't know, Lyft and Netflix and Tesla. And I can hit save. And those will now be added onto my main screen here and I can see the price fluctuations of them over the past day on the right hand side. Furthermore, let's take a look at the other assets. You can toggle over to the ETFs and they have certain ETFs available that you can invest in there. You can go over to different cryptocurrencies here. Of course, again, not my cup of tea, but some people may like this feature. And finally, fiat currencies. And this could be interesting in the way of perhaps you live in a locale where you would like to preserve your purchasing power, but you also want to be more sure of uh, you know, what your purchasing power is going to be in a week or a month than, um, you know, the volatility of Bitcoin. Perhaps you're in Venezuela, you can convert your bolivars to Bitcoin. Now you can put this into an app and instead maybe track like the US dollar or something. And that gives you some certainty of your purchasing power in the coming weeks or months. Uh, so you can utilize this in some interesting ways. Um, so, the other thing here is at the bottom of every single one, depending on where you're at, so like in the crypto, you can see I can't find what I'm looking for. If you tab that, you can actually suggest additions that they could make in the crypto, the ETFs, or the stocks section of each tab here. So very interesting indeed. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually do an exchange of my Bitcoin into some Canadian dollars so it will track the value of those Canadian dollars. Now I would do an, an example of stocks, but the stocks are subject to the opening and closing hours of the regular stock market of the regular financial markets. And at the time of recording this, they are closed on the East Coast. I am Mountain Standard Time, so I'm a couple hours behind. They've been closed for, I believe, about an hour now. So I'm outside that window, but it would work much the same. So I'm going to go down to the very bottom and tap on the Exchange tab. I'm going to choose the asset I'd like to move. Of course, the only asset sitting here right now is Bitcoin. Okay, and then I have only the assets that I've expressed interest in. Okay, I can add more to this list, but that's what it's showing me here. So I'm going to tap on Canadian dollar. And now this is one of uh, the screens that I would love the ability to specify an amount of Canadian dollars instead of the amount of Bitcoin that I'm putting into it. That would be convenient, uh, but that's just not the case here. And that's something that uh, I would like to see improved upon here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say 0, 0.0... Mm, how much? Maybe not even that much. It's 005. So 70 bucks is what I'm going to do. 
And so I will be paying the network fee for for the Bitcoin transfer. Um, and uh, if I had to guess, I imagine there's not really much play on that. You, you don't have any control over that. Again, something that w- could be improved upon. Uh, but I'm going to hit review. And it takes a second to, to load up and show me what I'm getting. Okay, so I'm what's my network fee? Uh, it's actually showing no network fee. So fair enough. Um, and what am I doing here? Okay, yeah, well, that looks good. And I'm going to hit confirm in the top right hand corner. And all right, and it was that was pretty seamless. So already I have the $70 and 60 cents uh, that I've designated and my Bitcoin value was reduced. Now, um, the thing with this is that uh, when I send off the Bitcoin, there is uh, the network confirmation time of Bitcoin that can take some time. So it may not be officially confirmed. You can see underneath here, it says that I have 70, 60, but available is zero dollars. And that will just disappear um, once once the confirmation is made on the Bitcoin network. So that $70 will be convertible into whatever else I like. Uh, so yeah, that's that's more or less how this app works. Now in the top left here, I'm not gonna click on that because there's some personal information there, but that has your profile. It will have your, your name, mobile number, email address. It will also have um, some of the settings like local currency and some other of the more advanced options in there. But more or less, this is the runaround of how this app works. Now, if you want to add money, I'm just going to show you really quick. If you want to add from a crypto wallet, then you can, these are the assets that you can actually send into the application. So when you have your backup phrase, the backup phrase is only securing these assets because they're actually held and with the private key of this app. Every other cryptocurrency, this is important to know, every other cryptocurrency in this app, you are not actually holding yourself if you convert into it. You're just getting exposure to the price fluctuation of it, okay? But these ones you can actually send in and send out of the application. Same if I go to uh, withdraw at the bottom right. If I click on withdraw and send to crypto wallet, again, you can see only the highlight highlighted ones can be withdrawn. So those are the ones that you actually have custody of. All of these other ones listed would just be getting exposure to the price movements. Um, and just to show, again, adding money, uh, Visa and MasterCard, uh, yeah, all good. And if you want to do a bank transfer, uh, see this is US banks only. You can scroll through. Obviously, I'm not in the US, so this is not accessible to me. And same thing with the withdrawal screen, transfer to bank. Well, um, yeah, I again, Canadian dollar, I don't have any balance right now because it's not confirmed, but it would give me the exact same. Actually, you know what? You can transfer direct from Bitcoin to your bank account, so it'll convert it. Again, it gives me a list of banks, but I cannot do this because I'm outside the U.S. Uh, but still, I think this is pretty cool. I think this is a great idea. I think it gives just people more access to financial instruments from around the globe that they would not have had access to if Bitcoin didn't exist. So kudos to Abra. I'm very interested to see how they progress from here. If there's some things I'd like to see is more control on fees, being able to designate a dollar amount versus just a Bitcoin amount. And if you noticed when I went to add crypto, if I click on Bitcoin, that's an address with a one, my friends. That is a legacy address. I would love to see that as a SegWit address um, because, you know, that not only saves uh, me on fees when I go to send back out, but it also saves Abron fees when they're sending back and forth from their own wallet. So uh, something I would very much like to see from these guys. With that, I, th- I think I'm going to wrap up here. Hopefully this gave you a good overview of what Abra is capable of. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. I'd love to get more eyeballs on my content. Um, if you want to support the show in another way, you can check out either of the sponsors I discussed at the beginning in the links down below. So that's NordVPN or Ledin. And other than that, if you really like what you saw, you can always drop me a Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. So let me know what you thought about Abra, if you think it's innovative or you think it's mm, maybe not for you. And I will see you guys tomorrow for your daily session.